Thank you for coming for our fourth inquirer's class. As we could see last time, we talked about how the creation of God reveals, as St. Paul says, that the creation of the world, that, um, that since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, the invisible attributes of God are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. And we could see from how from atomic level, from the level of atoms to the level of galaxies, we can see how everything reveals the Holy Trinity, how everything reveals the Godhead. And we got to talk a little bit about the Rublev icon of the Holy Trinity and how in shape, form, and color, Andrew Rublev revealed so much about this mystery of the Holy Trinity. Today, we'll continue our conversation about who God is and with whom we are called to become one. So today's presentation is about unity and diversity. And we will start again from what the creation reveals to us. There is a lot of diversity in the creation of God. I, I chose for you just two pictures. The pictures, the images of a few children, a few human, human beings, and the image of a galaxy. When we look at these two images, they reveal a lot of diversity. They seem to have nothing in common, human beings and galaxies, right? But at a deeper look, when we see the neural network in a human being and the cosmic web of a galaxy, don't they look alike? Because, again, the Creator imprinted His mystery of unity and diversity in everything that the Holy Trinity created. Indeed, we find this unity and diversity within the Godhead. We have three persons sharing the same divine nature, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, being diverse, being very personal, and at the same time being one. So let's see now how the black icon of the Trinity reveals the oneness of, of the three persons and the diversity of the three persons of the Godhead. As I was telling you last time, this angel stands for God the Father, this angel stands for God the Son, this angel stands for God the Holy Spirit. How do we know it? First of all, <clears throat> before we go into the personalities, let's see what elements reveal the oneness of the three persons of the Holy Trinity. All three angels are of the same size and shape. Okay? We can see some differences in the shape, but all of them are the same size. All three of them sit on the same type of thrones. All three of them are holding the same types of staffs. All three of them are wearing an inner garment and an outer garment. So all these elements show things that they have in common. <clears throat> On the other hand, yes, they are of the same size, but their posture is different. This angel stands for God the, God the Father, who bows a little bit towards these two angels, and both these two angels bow towards him. Because he is the source of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, from the Father, the Son was born from eternity. From the Father, the Holy Spirit proceeds from eternity. That's why he bows towards them, because he's the one who, uh, who begot uh, God the Son. He's the one who proceeds the Holy Spirit, and they 
come from him. They come out from him. When it's about the vestments, this is a, 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 the, the clearest indication that this angel stands for God the Father, this one stands for uh, God the Son, this one for, for God the Holy Spirit. Because according to the Bible, God dwells in unapproachable light. Nobody saw God at any time. This angel wears the outer garment. First of all, the outer garment is gold, light. God dwells in unapproachable light. And his inner garment is hardly seen because nobody saw God at any time. Blue in iconography stands for divinity, red stands for humanity. So all three angels, that's another element that they have in common, all three angels are wearing an, a blue garment. Okay? But they wear it in a different way. They have divinity in common. But the divinity of the Father is hardly seen. The son wears his, uh, his uh, blue garment on the outside because he is the one who revealed God to us. The divinity of the son is visible. He made God visible. The Holy Spirit wears the blue garment on the inside but much more visible than the Father because the Holy Spirit reveals the Father but he did not become incarnate. Okay. He's everywhere present, but he's not becoming carnal. So, if the outer vestment of the angel who stands for God the Father is gold, the outer vestment of <coughs> the angel who stands for the Son is blue, the outer vestment of the angel who stands for the Holy Spirit is green. Why green? Because he is the giver of life. His manifestation is to give life. We see the Holy Spirit of God moving about the face of the, of the water at the beginning of creation. He is the breath of life. He's referred so many times in the Bible in the revelation of God as the giver of life. So, his manifestation gives life. The angel who stands for God the Son wears a red vestment on the inside. Now, I said that red stands for humanity, for blood. Why on the inside? Because he came fully human like us. He really assumed our humanity. Our humanity became very much his on the inside. And he revealed divinity to us. He also is wearing this golden, uh, uh, golden band that comes from the book of Revelation, which is uh, St. John Evangelist, so one like the Son of God with a, with a long vestment, with a long vestment, and a golden stripe on his vest, which stands for, for king and for royal. Also, <clears throat> the background of the icon reveals a lot about the unity and the diversity of the three persons of the Holy Trinity. Behind the angel who stands, the, uh, who stands for God the Father, there is a house, a kind of a house. Behind the angel who stands for uh, God the Son, there is a tree. Behind the angel who stands for God the Holy Spirit, there is a rock. They seem to be accidental background elements. Nothing is accidental. Once again, the icon reveals the revelation of God in shape, form, and color. Why a house behind the angel who stands for God the Father? In the Gospel, in the Gospel of John, the Lord says, In my Father's house are many mansions. I'll go to, pre to prepare a place for you. Behind the angel who stands for the Holy Spirit, there is a rock, because upon the earth, upon the whole creation, the Holy Spirit was sent to sanctify the whole creation. And he is also, the rock also reminds us, reminds us of the strong foundation of the faith. Behind the angel who stands for God the Son, there is a tree. The tree of life from the middle of paradise, which was brought into the world by the Son. The tree of life was the cross. And another interesting element, the house faces the tree and the rock as the father and the tree and the rock face the house. As the father faces the son and the Holy Spirit, 
the Son of the Holy Spirit face the, face the Father. So, the house of God, the kingdom of heaven, comes upon the world, and the world is led to the kingdom of heaven by the Son and the Holy Spirit. Everything comes together. So there is so much movement, so much unity and diversity within the Trinity. Now once again, for us, for Orthodox Christians, the teaching about the Holy Trinity is not just an element of theology. For us, it's our social platform. What the Holy Trinity is, we are called to become. From what I'm seeing in the history of humanity, humanity suffered tremendously because almost any social, any human social system did not know to keep the balance between unity and personality, unity and diversity. Every human social system emphasized too much one or the other. Our capitalist social system seems to emphasize too much, from what I'm seeing, seems to emphasize the personality too much. My rights, my individuality, and it pushes everything to individualism. And because of this, the society suffers a lot. On the other hand, you know, when people got tired of this indi individualism, they turned everything upside down, and they said, we have to make everybody the same. And that was communism, and still is, trying to make everybody the same, to try to make everybody one, emphasizing the oneness between the persons too much. But they destroyed the personality, and it didn't work. The only social system that works is this. We were created in the image of the Holy Trinity. And only by keeping the balance between unity and personality, between oneness and diversity, we can find our balance. And we do not have to become the same in order to be one. Somebody asked last time if each of the three persons of the Holy Trinity has his own will. And the answer is yes. They have different personalities, with different wills, but they bring their personality and their wills into a loving community. And this is who we are called to become at any level, at family level, at societal level, to keep, to love our diversity and our differences, and to respect each other's differences, and still to remember that all of us are human beings. We all share the same human nature, and we are called to be one, to support each other, because we need each other with our differences. Thank you very much.